So what I'm curious about is if these LED strip lights can be used instead of regular lights. So nowadays I'm seeing these LED strip lights all over the place. They're in the big box stores. They're in Lee Valley. They're in your home and garden type magazines. But it's all marketed as accent lighting, so you're led to believe that, you know, this just provides a little glow in the background or something. This particular strip is 5 meters long, and it's rated at 720 lumens per meter, which is roughly equivalent to a 60 watt light bulb. So, this whole strip should be like 5 60 watt light bulbs, which to me is not accent lighting. That's a lot of light. There are many different kinds of LED strip lights out there, so be careful and do your research thoroughly. This particular unit has 60 LEDs per meter, and these are the larger 5050 SMD LEDs. The whole strip is rated at 72 watts, so it needs a fair size power adapter as well. All these strip lights come with adhesive backing, but since I'm just testing it out, I didn't want to do anything permanent, certainly not yet. So I'm just using rubber bands to hold it to this piece of wood so that I can put it up for testing. Here we go. Unfortunately, I don't have access to a light meter. I can tell you that subjectively, the old double T11 fluorescent is brighter. Not a lot, but it is brighter. I now wish I'd bought two of these to really test it out. I do like how the strip light brings the light closer to the walls. I mean, the fluorescent light is brighter. There's no arguing with that. But the fluorescent light leaves shadows in the corners because it's all concentrated in the middle. The strip light brings the light right to the walls. It's much more even. I borrowed this kilowatt meter because I wanted to measure the actual usage of the LED strip and right now it's fluctuating between 49 and 50 watts. That's really interesting because the manufacturer lists this thing as taking 72 watts. So that's a lot less. So since my first test went really well and I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep this down here, uh, I wanted to find a, a way to permanently mount it, but I thought about just attaching it right to the joist, but that's just a bit too permanent. I'd like to be able to move it. So I went out and bought a 10 foot 2x8 and I ripped it to a 3 inch width and then I resawed that in half to give me two because I am getting another strip. And I painted it white just to make it a little bit more reflective even though the LED is very directional downward. And uh, I just mounted the strips on here. Here at the end, I didn't want to cut it and deal with soldering, so I just looped it back. It just flips up a bit there, but uh, that should be fine. So look at this. It is uh, not holding. Over here also, I've already taped it up so it wouldn't fall. That's no good. So what is it? Is it because I painted the board? I don't know, is it, uh, is it just bad adhesive? I don't know, I'm going to try some hot glue and hopefully that will take care of things. If you can't put it upside down on the ceiling, it's not much good. Okay, that seems a lot more secure now. We will see over the next week or so. It only took like a week and a half for the, uh, for the first thing to start letting go. And really, it's not that hard to fix. I mean, hot glue is pretty easy, but you shouldn't have to do it. Okay, so it's been about three weeks since the last part of the video was shot. I decided I wanted some more LEDs, and it's taken me this long to get them. My first set of LEDs I bought from Amazon. They came in really quickly. For the second set, I did some research, and I... I did some more research and I found another set of LEDs which are supposed to be even brighter. Unfortunately here in Canada I can only find one source for them on Amazon and it's the stereotypical slow boat from China so these took four and a half weeks to get here and along with that I wanted to try something else so I got myself a old thrown out laptop power supply from work from the recycling bin and I want to try powering the LEDs with this to make the cost come down because these only cost me seven dollars. My last set had cost me about twenty two dollars Canadian of course these are all Canadian funds along with another twenty dollars for a power supply. This was like seven dollars and twenty cents I just had to wait four and a half weeks for it. This was free the problem is is that this puts out 
about 18 volts, and I'm only supposed to have 12. So the other thing I bought was this little, and I'm probably going to mangle the name, a DC to DC voltage regulator. So this can take in up to 30 volts, and you can, there's a little dial on here where you can regulate it down to whatever voltage you want. And so for that, I need myself a little fluke meter, and so this is going to get a little messy. However, if this works, I'm down to $10 for a setup versus $40, and I'd rather keep the money in the bank than give it to someone else. This is that little uh, DC to DC regulator that I mentioned. Uh, it came with basically nothing in the way of instructions, but here it's marked in negative, in positive, and then here is out positive, out negative. And there's a little dial on top of this. I've seen I've seen this used online, so I mean there's not that much to making this work. It's good. These are the LEDs. Um, this is a much more bare bones set than the last one. All it came in was in a little foil pouch with some instructions on it in a bubble pack. These are called 5630 SMD LEDs, and the online instruction claims that these are even even brighter than the 5050s, which are the ones that I've got up on the ceiling right now. All this has is a strip, a little 3M coating on the back, and some wires. No, no, uh, no jacks, no connectors, nothing else at all, unlike the other set. So that's what you get when you go really bare bones. So this is an old HP laptop power supply. It comes with an end on it like that, and Really, I'm really fortunate here. The the previous set of LED strips that I came came with an extra connector, and that just fits into there beautifully. So I do not have to have a nasty end here. This part I'm going to have to cut to go through the uh, little voltage regulator board before it hooks up to the LED. I am not an electronics expert, but I know a few things, and that should work just fine now. Yeah. Okay, so let's plug this in. Let's turn this on. Not even on screen. Here, let me get this meter on screen. 14.5. 14, 13.9, 12.2, that's probably close enough. So let us see what happens if we hook up our lights. Let's see. One, two. Ho, ho, ho. I see light. Cool. Got my power supply plugged in. I've got this wired into the circuit and boom. Works beautifully. Now this will need some sort of an enclosure. I will probably look at getting a little plastic box or some sort of enclosure which I will then hot glue into place so there's no strain issues. But we're in business, I should have a nice long light in another few moments. And that's well I'm mounting this one right beside the other light. I wouldn't leave it here permanently, but for testing, I want to see them in the exact, exact same situation. This is the original 5630s. And for some reason, they will often have a slight delay. I'll we'll turn those off. Here's the new 5630s. Kind of seem the same. It's hard to say. I think the original one, the 5050s, are brighter than these 5630s. Imagine that, somebody lied on the internet. They're very close though, they're very close, and of course, these are much cheaper. All important question now is, so how 
does that compare to having a fluorescent light? Again, I like how wide the light is. It's very wall-to-wall -wall because it's coming from so many different locations. You know, I think if I moved one so it was over here, so it was spread out more, that might be comparable. I might have to do that still. Okay, I now have two strings. I've separated them on separate joists. They're three and a half, about three and a half feet, 40 inches apart. And I wish I had a light meter. Of course, now when I unplug those, now the fluorescent feels dark. This is the problem with subjective, subjective guessing. Ah. Now with just the fluorescence, I'm really seeing the shadows at the wall where the light is not quite reaching. Maybe I'll just keep all of them. Not very energy efficient decision. Okay, I'm calling it. I think it's equivalent. I can't measure it, I can't say for sure, but I think this feels just about as bright as when I have just the double fluorescent going. So let's get the electrical meter out now and see what we got. Okay, so this is the kilowatt meter and I'm measuring the new string of LEDs and it is showing 51. It's come as down as far as 49. When I first plugged it in, it was showing 55 and I thought it was gonna be drawing more but it seems to have settled down, so it's in the 49 to 51 range. Let's, let's just call it 50 watts. Okay, it's time to wrap this up. First, let's talk about wattage. So, the old T11 double fluorescent light bulb that we're all very familiar with, these bulbs are both rated at 40 watts, so that's 80 watts in total. I don't have a way of measuring household wiring, what the draw is, so I'm just going by the numbers there, 80 watts. Um, uh, whereas these two, between the two of them, is about 105 watts. So these LED lights, I think they can generate just as much light, but they are using more electricity. And if you had the newer T8s, those I think are 32 watts, so that's like 70 watts total or, or less, thereabouts. Um, I better double check that and I'll write correct numbers here, what a, what a T8 goes for. So that's wattages. In wattages, the old one's better. Hard to believe. Um, you know, somewhere in, here, somewhere in here I should fit a little disclaimer that I'm a woodworker, I've got a software degree, not an engineer, not an electrician. Um, I'm reading manuals, I'm reading labels, and that's what I'm making my judgments based on. Okay. Second point, let's talk dollars. Um, the first one that I bought, as uh, I've mentioned, was about $22 Canadian from Amazon. However, I needed to buy a power supply. That was another $20, so total $42. 42 bucks. Um, the new one, slow boat from China, I mean, it also came from Amazon, but it took forever. That was like four and a half weeks, if you're willing to wait for it. That was a grand total of about... Um, seven dollars and twenty cents Canadian for the LED strip and then together with that I had to add the DC DC voltage regulator converter gizmo whatever you call that that was another 350 so let's call that eleven dollars in total um, the power supply still need a power supply but I pulled that out of the recycling bin at work that's a freebie so if you can do two of those for like twenty two dollars you've got a nice fixture if you go the other route, two fixtures are going to cost you like, you know, $84, $85. That's not particularly cheap when I can still run to the big box store and I could buy an old fluorescent, basic fluorescent fixture for about, you know, shop lights are like $25 and then a couple of bulbs, you know, you're still, you know, what, $35 total. Um, so that's interesting. So, that about brings us to the end. It was fun. Um, 
doing this. I had fun doing all this and figuring it all out. I was quite surprised at the results. I, I thought these were going to be much less wattage than the old style lights. Um, I thought they were going to be a little bit brighter. They are usable. Um, I'm going to use them in my shop. Uh, I don't think I'm going to put in a whole ton of them. I think I'm just going to stick with these two for now. And so I think that brings us to the end. I'd like to thank you for stopping by. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it, found it entertaining. And uh, um, as always, um, please subscribe if you feel that I've earned it. Please visit my website, wordsandwood.com. I've got years and years of woodworking projects there, not too many electrical projects. And uh, I think that's about it, and we will see you next time. Talking way too much. <laughs>